Hello and welcome into the ONTV Fantasy Football League. This is the week two recap. I'm your commissioner, Joey Tysick. I've got Joe Johnson back with me again. Uh. And our new guest, Tracy Woodrum. Hello. Sitting at the top of the standings. <laughs> Can you believe it? I cannot. <laughs> beginner's luck yes yes for sure <laughs> i can sense a little jealousy in your voice there joe <laughs> that's the thing about fantasy football when i get a win i'm i'm just jubilant all week long i get a loss it's another story <laughs> yeah it's it's very temperamental um but tracy how's your experience been so far through two weeks oh well i mean it's been fantastic <laughs> i have two wins so <laughs> This is my first time ever doing fantasy football, so I appreciate, Joey, the uh, the invite, mm -hmm. and uh, it's been a lot of fun. I've really been enjoying it, and I'm actually watching and paying attention to more games than right. I normally do. I mean, I usually, I can sit and watch football, you know, all Sunday, Thursday, Monday, but sometimes, you know, you kind of tune in and out, and now I'm, like, watching players and <laughs> yeah. taking down names. and <laughs> Right. You need to discover the red zone where yeah. you can sit down, watch the red zone channel, and they flip from game to game to game, and you oh. just eat snacks and watch. Oh, I do you need set that. set your remote aside. And especially the snacks. That's the important <laughs> part. <laughs> yes. We had, yeah. we had ribs oh. on Sunday. Oh, nice. nice. Some, it was great. Very nice. Um, but let's get right into the matchups. Um, Tracy was just barely outdone this week by Sammy and the Green Buckeyes, who... Um, ah, I wonder who played him. Hmm, that's unfortunate. Uh, <laughs> Sammy put up 147 points on wow. the Hollywood Blockbusters, who put up 119. Joe, talk about, talk about <laughs> your team. What happened here? You know, when you compare my score to Sammy's, it, it doesn't look good, but... You look at the other scores in the league, I would have beaten five other players. I just happened to go against the guy who put up the most teams or most points in week two. Um, my team looked good on paper. Uh, Patrick Mahomes is my quarterback. Uh, Bijan Robinson is my running back. He had a good game. Debo Samuel uh, came out and had a, a good game. Mm -hmm. And so you would think I would have got the win. Now, I did an experiment that didn't pay off. I started both Atlanta running backs, uh, Robinson and uh, Algier. Algier had a what couple of touchdowns in week one. Yep. Of course, I put him in the roster, and he scores 4.8 points. Yeah. Not that it would have made a difference if you look at my bench, but uh, that was a mistake. Algier is going to get relegated to the bench this week. Um, but uh, Sammy blew up. His team blew up. Uh, Hertz kept getting those uh, guaranteed one-yard touchdown runs, which was making me angry. Yep. And uh, Allen blew up for the Chargers, 31 points. He's pretty yeah. much the player of the week almost. Mm -hmm. uh, Barkley, before he got hurt, put up uh, 27 points. So uh, just Sammy's team just blew up on me. Yep. So I He had a good week. And uh, I already talked to Sammy this week. He's pretty, uh, pretty devastated by the Barkley injury. He'll be out maybe two to three weeks. Uh, so he's going to have to find a replacement for that. And after him putting up 27 points, that's going to be a damper to his team next week. That's the story yep. of the season so far, injuries. There have yep. been so many major, major injuries. Now, luckily, yeah. Barkley will only be out about three weeks, but there are several other players, including Nick Chubb, who are done for the season. Yeah. And I don't know why. I don't know why these uh, injuries are so common just two weeks into the season. There's been some complaints about the artificial turf not having enough give. Uh, there are people who say that the preseason is too short. It doesn't allow players to get into game shape before week one. I don't know what the reason is, but uh, these these injuries have been uh, just crippling, for the yeah. lack of a better term. I mean, football is just one of those sports that it's – yeah. It's dangerous. You can you just never know, right? Yeah. Like Nick Chubb, I'm, I'm pretty sure Pittsburgh plays on grass. Nick Chubb just got the wrong side of somebody's foot going into his knee. His knee doesn't bend that way. That's not how knees work. Mm. And uh, they said he his career could be in jeopardy. Oh. Yeah. Which is wild. Wow. Uh, heartbreaking. Gotta feel bad. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. So it's been tough. Uh, moving on. Tracy's top notch team. Woohoo! <laughs> Beat the halftime honeybees who. Put up a lot of points last week yeah. uh, with Tua and Tyreek Hill. This week, those two were very pedestrian. They yeah. only put up 12 points and 15 points respectively. And then it seemed like, Tracy, you got 
everything out of your wide receivers yeah. and your tight end. Yeah. How did your week go? How was it watching these guys? Oh, it was awesome. I, I mean, so I was projected to win this week, but, you know, last week I was projected to lose and I won. So I, I wasn't, you know, counting on that at all. Right. And so as the games, you know, started to shape up, you know, it came down to Monday night and my team was done. Like, I, no more points. And, uh, yeah, the halftime honeybees still had two players uh, on the Dolphins that were playing Monday night football. So I, I wasn't sure how that was gonna, how that was going to go because those players, like you said, they put up a lot of points last week. Yeah. So I was really expecting them to just blow, you know, blow through and, uh, you know, come out on top. But I was I was cheering for the other team. So I think they heard <laughs> me. And here we are. <laughs> yeah. New England so. is known for finding ways to stop the best players. That's why yeah. Bill Belichick is a renowned coach in the NFL. So luckily for you, yeah, he stopped them. Yeah, it was that was awesome. So I, and I feel surprising. like I feel like my my defense, I'm getting some mileage out of them as well. Oh yeah. So Dallas, Dallas is uh, You don't you don't see defenses no. do that much typically. I mean, every once in a while they'll have a big blow up game, but two back-to-back really good performances. They're about to play another bad team this week in Arizona. Uh, so they could be a sneaky MVP for you so far. Nice. I like it. You know, I have to thank one of my clients because she's moving here from Texas. And so that's how I picked my defense. Mm. Like that what strategy. Did, <laughs> what did Higgins have last week? He, I, uh, he it, had a dud. Yeah. And all of a sudden and this week, yeah. one week later, two touchdowns yeah. for 28 yeah. points. Cause last week was the day was he had ze- eight targets, zero catches. Yeah, I was pretty disappointed in him last week. And then this week, I was like, wow. Another one I was really surprised by is uh, TJ Hawkinson. Yeah. Um, He's been excelling there in Miami. They're using him, or Miami, Minnesota. Minnesota, He's been using him really well there. He more than doubled his points from the first week. So, yeah. Yeah. uh, Happy to see that. But I do have a couple that are questionable for next week. So, I'm going to have to make some changes and, you know, bring some off my bench for, for week three. Right. You know, this uh, the result you got from well, the Bengals Higgins, it just goes to show that for, based on one week of a performance, you shouldn't give up on a player. Yeah. You know, he's a, he's one of the elite receivers in the league, and the fact that you stuck with him, left him in your lineup, and he produced for you uh, shows that you can't, you know, push the panic button. You've got to stick with the, the guys who are producing. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I have one, and you know, I, I don't remember which player that was. I'll have to go look at my notes later, but I have one that I was getting ready to, um, you know, put on as a waiver and and dump. But the reading that I did said that he's going to be a, uh, I forget the term that was used, but basically like kind of like a a dark horse. Like we we Mm -hmm. should see him kind of putting up some points later in the season. So uh, I see a a running back on your bench, uh, Robinson with Washington. He put up uh, 28.9 points. So. Yeah, you you have some talent on your bench that could step in. Yep, uh, I I picked up Robinson last week. Um, at the you know after last week, and so yeah, I think he's he's going to be in the starting lineup for next week. Yep. All right, moving on to the next matchup, we have uh, Ian's team taking on Drake's team. Unfortunately, Drake having to face off early against two good opponents back to back weeks. Um, he's still trying to find his footing, and. Uh, Ian had to replace Austin Eckler this week, and he still was able to put up 128 points. To me, that's pretty scary moving forward that his best player was down and he can still find other guys to fill in for him. Uh, Justin Herbert had another good game. Devontae Smith had another solid game for the Eagles. Uh, Christian Kirk uh, came back to form. I think he basically had a dud last week. Damn. And Jacksonville used him a bunch uh, in this week. Um, the other thing on Drake's team, Drake did say he was going to use CJ Stroud and CJ Stroud is still on his bench. So I don't know if that was a mistake or what. Uh, he also had Daniel Jones on his bench too. Both of those quarterbacks would have been better than Justin Fields. Um, but it's hard to go away from Fields the way that he finished his season last year. Um, Justin Jefferson did his thing. Drake London. We finally saw him do something in Atlanta's Another offense. comeback. Yeah. Yeah. And, uh, Jake Moody, he decided to play Jake Moody, which I told him last week because Jake Moody had a really good week one after everybody dogged him during the draft, and he had another solid uh, week 14 two. 14 points yeah, from your wow. kicker isn't too bad. No. Yeah. 
Unfortunately, the Detroit defense did not step up, and uh, Malik and I will talk about that on our podcast oh. tomorrow. <laughs> and I'm not looking forward. To no, it. that's gonna be a that's gonna be a rough one. Yeah. Um. Then we had. Oh, Marie's team, the Dak Knight Rises, had 127.6 points, uh, beating Malik's last place team, who is actually uh, going with the name. <laughs> and uh, it's, he couldn't crack a hundred points this week. And wow. this was exactly kind of what we talked about last week. Malik scared off in week one after Josh Allen had four turnovers or whatever it was. So he decided to go to Trevor Lawrence this week, and Josh Allen outperformed Trevor Lawrence. Yep. Jamar Chase, another dud. That's it's, that's nervy. There's something going on with the Bengals. Uh, their quarterback is skittish. Um, I yeah. mean, other than T. Higgins, who had a nice game. But uh, something's going on with the Bengals. I don't know what. Yeah. And it stinks that uh, Marie's team definitely valued the Se- Seattle wide receivers. <laughs> we were watching the game together, and she's like, I feel bad, but I'm excited that my team's scoring. So she wasn't fully in on the Lions winning oh. yeah. Sunday. But you know what's interesting? I played her last week, and she started both Seattle wide receivers, and I thought, man, that's a no-no. You never start two wide receivers from the same team. And last week, one player, I think it was Lockett, did really well, and Metcalf. I think it was the other better. way around. It was the other way around? Yeah. This week, they they both got decent points, 13.5 right. from Metcalf and mm-hmm. 25 from Lockett. So... What do I know? Yeah. And uh, Malik left some points on his bench, like I said, Josh Allen. And then George Pickens without Deontay Johnson, only four catches, but big plays. He had a 71-yard touchdown. Uh, so Malik leaving some points on the board. But Marie played Dak, Dak Prescott over Kirk Cousins, and Kirk Cousins had a really good game. Yeah, so. you know what? And that's uh, something to be said about Cousins is Minnesota does not look good, and it looks like they're going to be playing from behind a lot. Yeah, uh, he had a. If I recall, he didn't have much of a first half, and then in the mm-hmm. second half, he had to start passing a lot. Yeah. Um. So sometimes a good quarterback on a bad team will produce a lot of points because they have to score a lot at the end of the game. Um. So yeah, twenty eight point five six from Cousins. Yeah. Yeah, I'm starting to see a trend too in that there's a lot of points on the bench. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so yeah. There's a, there's a little bit of luck involved with that, <laughs> unfortunately. Um, that's going to happen, and you have to be able to take it with a grain of salt. Sometimes it means you should get those bench guys onto your starting lineup, but you want to be careful about it, too. Yeah, you want to play matchups. You know, I like to look at defenses and see how they rank against the running game, against the passing game, um, and kind of start players based on that. It is frustrating when you leave points on the bench and then you start the guy the next week and he doesn't do anything. And yeah. the guy you bench scores points. That's right. just the nature of fantasy football. Yeah. 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 And then finally, my matchup with my brother. Uh, he was had to find a replacement for Aaron Rodgers. And Derek Carr, I guess, wasn't really it to replace him. <laughs> uh, only got him 6.7 points. Uh, this was like the lowest scoring matchup, but... In a rare occurrence, I would say, the top five scoring teams beat the top five losers. Hmm. So nobody that lost, lost because they got completely outperformed, Mm -hmm. which is nice to see in my opinion. Um, I had another big day from Christian McCaffrey. No surprise there. Rashad White was a big surprise for me, but Chicago might just be that bad. Uh, I finally got Mark Andrews back, which made me feel good. Um Yep. And then I left Puka Nakua on my bench, which uh, he will not be this week. Yeah. He apparently wow. is the real deal. That's one thing I don't wow, understand. Yep. This happened in another league where Puka had a big game in week one. People rushed to the waiver wire to get him. And both leagues that I'm in, he was on the bench. I hope you've learned your lesson. Well, <laughs> it's mostly when you look at the line of the Rams are playing the 49ers. That's a big scare to me, and I yeah. think that scared off a lot of people not knowing. You know, there, we've seen it a lot where one-week wonders will happen, and you get nervous about that a little bit. I played Zay Flowers instead, who also had a really good week one, not so much of a week two. Um, but now that Puka's done it for two two weeks in a row, I think he's going to get the nod. Um, meanwhile, my brother, he's just he's battling injuries. He lost Nick Chubb. 
Uh, like I said, he lost Aaron mm-hmm. Rodgers, so he's got a lot to do. But his team is pretty deep. He's got good options. He's got Ken Walker, Terry McLaurin on the bench. So I think he'll be uh, just fine. A little surprised he doesn't. I mean, I know he lost Rodgers, but I'm a little surprised he doesn't have a backup quarterback right now. Uh, I don't know if he plans on trading for one or if he's going to try and find one on the waiver wire. But I don't know if I'd uh, put all my eggs in my car basket. Uh, I guess we'll kind of have to wait and see. But, you know, 6.72 points from your quarterback does not cut it. Yeah. Uh, he's he's going to have to start looking at alternatives and maybe start offering some trades. Right. Him and I were in trade discussions for a moment, so maybe that's an option. Now, now can I ask, is, is that a strategy, though, to just have one quarterback because then you can have an extra, like, wide receiver or running back, you know? Yes. It, uh, you if know, you, right? Because on your bye week, if your quarterback is performing, right? Yeah, and on your exactly. bye week, then you can um, – pick up an extra one, right? And that's the thing. Let's say you have a deep bench and you don't want to get rid of anybody and now your quarterback's bye week rolls around. You have to drop somebody. You right. have to drop a player to pick up a one-week quarterback starter. So yeah. not sure if I'd like going through the season with one quarterback unless he's just a plug-and-play quarterback where you put him in and he performs every week. Then maybe you take that risk. But like I said, I don't know if Carr's the guy. Carolina's defense isn't all that great and uh he didn't put up good numbers they they did end up running the ball a lot with uh williams backup who scored two touchdowns but i don't know i'm not sure how how long i would stick with Carr in that quarterback slot yeah he'll have to figure something out and i mean he talked to me uh earlier in the week about uh what to do so we'll see okay we're back after a couple little technical difficulties (laughs) Uh, it's never a uh, dull day at <laughs> ONTV. Um, so we got all the matchups over with for week two. So now we're looking ahead uh, to the waiver wire for this week. Mm. Um, as we've said before, because we're in a smaller 10-team league, there's always going to be really good players. So right at the top of the list, Kyron Williams, one of the best running backs in fantasy right now uh, at the top. He's been very solid for L.A., but if you watch him in f- actual football, he's not that great. But he works out for fantasy because he's gotten touchdowns. He gets a lot of catches. Um, and uh, Cam Akers is being shopped around. Yes. So he may be the lead back, correct? Yeah. I mean, he's already basically been the lead back the last two weeks, but that would solidify it even more. Um, If you're looking for a wide receiver, Nico Collins, Houston wide receiver, has kind of become the number one guy for C.J. Stroud. If you're a Michigan fan, Nico Collins is a former Wolverine, so you can have that connection if you want. Malik. Go blue. (laughs) And then. (laughs) Hold on. Before we go forward with wide receivers, I'm looking at the top three running backs who are still on the waiver wire in our league, and uh, Mostert is uh, second. And he had a, a big, big game, mm-hmm. big, big game on Monday. So he's worthy of consideration. Yep. And with Chubb's injury, uh, his replacement is Ford. And I heard somebody say that the pundits, the fantasy experts, were kind of big on Ford before yeah. the season and mm-hmm. said that at some point during the season, he may have become the lead back. But now with Chubb gone for the season, Ford's going to be the lead back now. So yeah. those are three strong candidates, Williams, yeah. Mostert, and Ford in the running back position. Yeah, I think uh, I would probably even order them in that that order that they're listed is Kyron Williams, Raheem Mostert, and then Jerome Ford. There is a small chance that they could sign Kareem Hunt. I know that he visited with the Browns today, so there's always that possibility. Yeah. Uh, but three good wide receivers right there, or, or running, running backs back. right there. Um, the wide receivers, like I said, Nico Collins, Josh Reynolds, if you want another Detroit Lion, he's uh, been getting a lot of work since um, Jamison Williams is going to still be out. Well, he sure looked good, too. Yeah, he's kind of uh, basically the only red zone threat that the Lions really have, and especially if Amon Ross St. Brown is kind of banged up for the next couple weeks. Looks like he's going to be good to go, but it's just insurance policy. And then 2-2 Atwell. Um, like we said, the Rams have kind of been outperforming expectations and they've been having to throw it a lot and Stafford's looked pretty good so far. So he's another guy 
that uh, you could look at. Now, just uh, last week, I had to drop someone to pick up someone, and I cut Christian Watson with Green Bay. Uh, I know in the other league that we're in, you picked him up. Yeah. Um, what are your thoughts on Watson? What's his timeline for return? Um, they still don't really fully know. It sounds like he's st- he's going to ramp up his practicing this week. Mm-hmm. Uh, so there's a chance that he could play this week, but he's kind of the long-term answer if you're looking for somebody later that could season. help you later on in the season. Uh, that's basically why I did it in our other league um, because he's so dynamic he can get you touchdowns, but – you just have to watch out. He's had some hamstring injuries in the past. Well, that's the thing that concerns me when the, the word hamstring comes up is that's an injury that can reoccur mm-hmm. throughout the season, and that's why I flat out dropped him. I just don't know if I want to risk having someone who's injury prone in my starting lineup yep. only to lose them after a quarter or so and, and get single digits from them. So, yeah. I'm really wary of any any injury prone player. Right. Um besides that, uh tight end we always know is kind of a weird position. Uh take your stab at one if you need one. Um and then of course in a ten team league, you're always gonna have uh quality quarterbacks that you can go to if you need. Yeah, I'm looking in our league, uh, Matt Stafford's at the top of this list. I have him in another league. He's been sitting on my bench, but he's been looking. Well, the touchdowns haven't been there, but he's been looking very good. He's He looks healthy. He's getting a lot of yardage. They're uh, they're winning games, right? Are they 2-0? Uh, the Rams? I'll have to double check that. No, because they just lost to the 49ers. Oh, that's right. But uh, Stafford's been looking good, and so... Like in the case of your brother, if he's looking for a quarterback, <laughs> yeah, Sta- you could do a lot worse than Stafford. He, he was I mean, another he's a former one. Former Lions, so does he like Stafford? I know, uh, I know, I got his uh, first pick with Goff, but <laughs> yeah, it, he doesn't necessarily like Stafford. But he uh, he was deciding, he was thinking about Stafford. I know when I talked right. to him previously, but I think he was also scared of that 49ers matchup. But yeah. But now that we're past that. I'm seeing Russell Wilson is like the number two on this list for quarterbacks. And I'm just wondering if it was that. Did you see that pass that yeah, he the threw? Hail Mary. Yeah, oh, I was like, right. wow. The the game. Yeah, yeah, that, that added like, a lot of extra stats to his he, I, Yeah, I'm like, line. well, he's got a little bit of magic left, right? A little <laughs> bit, but last last yeah. season he last was season terrible. Last season was rough. So yeah, it's, he, yeah, he, it's he got me kicked fire. out of my uh, survivor pool last year. <laughs> so I'm not I'm not a fan. <laughs> <laughs> I know. It, when, when, uh, when I'm screwed over by a player, they're dead to me. I, <laughs> no, I'm like, I don't want them anymore. No more, yeah. Yeah, right. <laughs> All right, so looking on uh, to week three. And, ah, uh, look who I'm going up against next week. Hmm. The humongous melon heads <laughs> going Ooh, against the blockbusters. This will be good. Joe and Joey. <laughs> yeah. Right now, I am projected the favorite at 117 and Joe at 112. Uh, that's close. Uh, but, that is close. Right. You never know. Right. Uh, Joe Burrow might be hurt. Uh, and he plays on Monday night, which is one of the scariest things is, is to have an injury going for Monday night because you have to make your decision much earlier than Monday night because everybody else plays before that. Right. Uh, so I do have a couple thoughts of what I might do. Um, Anthony Richardson also coming out of uh, concussion protocol, I believe. So I don't know how he's going to look either. So I might be down both of my quarterbacks potentially. Mm. Uh, so I'll have to figure something out. Uh, but I have a couple ideas of what I could do. Um I don't know why this uh, Yahoo website is is uh, so down on me, man. It, <laughs> you know, after we drafted, it was like, oh, Hollywood blockbusters need a rewrite. It's a box office disaster, and I'm like, shut up. <laughs> and uh, I'm never favored to win a matchup. And I feel like I well, just want to prove Yahoo wrong. Let me ask. So this, you know, the the numbers that they're putting up is that who you currently have yes. in. So it's not counting your bench, right? So you right, can make some right. changes, and those numbers will change then. Exactly. Uh, okay. That's what I do Tuesday morning. I, uh, I okay. alter my lineup Tuesday morning. Tuesday. So I already okay. got who I think I'm going to start this week. But projections are just that. Uh, in week two, some, some people exceeded their projections. Some people fell below their projections. So right. you see the Yahoo scoring system kind of adjust as the game is played. Yeah. Um, but like I, again, on paper, my team looks solid. Mahomes is quarterback Debo Samuel Addison with the Vikings who he's, he's 
almost outplaying Jefferson. Like he's, no, he's okay, playing. okay, we gotta stop there. We gotta <laughs> in stop. The first well, no, no, two no, no, weeks, no, 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 no. He no, has no. the touchdowns. Nope. We're taking your card away. <laughs> oh, wow. does Jefferson have a touchdown yet? Uh, I think he does, doesn't uh, he? I'm I'm happy with Addison. Uh, I think you compared him last uh, to Dotson last yes. year, who as a rookie started off the season with a couple of touchdowns. Yeah. Um, but I like Addison. Bijan Robinson. People are saying. Uh, he's almost a lock for rookie of the year if he stays healthy, and he's going to be a top five running back on the season. Mm -hmm. uh, Gibbs looks like he might have his chance uh, with Detroit, uh, with uh, Montgomery uh, possibly missing some time. Gibbs is going to be the number one guy there. Maybe. Um, so I'd be I, nervous about and I have, Yeah. My San Fran defense hasn't really put up the points yet, but they're definitely one of the best defenses in the league. Yeah. So again, my, my team looks solid on paper. I just got to get some wins. Yeah. I, I think the hardest part though, in, in, again, in 10 team leagues, almost everybody's team is going to look pretty good on paper. Yeah. It's just yeah. if they perform or not that week. Right. And you know what? Yahoo doesn't know what they're talking about because, right. <laughs> because after we drafted, I was, they gave me an F rating. I was the yeah. only one out of all of our teams. I got an F rating and, and they put me in last place. And, and look who's 2-0 and oh and at yep. the top. Barely, but. Mm. <laughs> so the next matchup on my list is Malik's last place team taking on the Green Buckeye. So Sammy coming off a big win Ooh. and Malik looking for his first That's win. Uh, I'm curious of what quarterback he's going to start this week. Um, but his team has a ton of potential. Jamar Chase has not lived up to that yet. He's had awful games. Like we said, the Bengals have just struggled mightily. And then Sammy's got to replace Saquon Barkley. And right now he has Najee Harrison, and that's that's not Saquon Barkley. Yeah. So. I, yeah I mean, uh, I, I was going to say, one of the things I think Malik needs to do is change his team name. I mean, he's <laughs> yeah. just kind of like setting himself up with yeah, that name. Right. So, the negativity. Yeah. Come and on. I, let's, let's, a loss. And I've told exactly. him that. Yes. Change the name and maybe you're going to change your outcomes, your luck. Yeah. Well, the projection's really tight. I mean, 120 yeah. to 118. And right. um, I don't know if Malik should stick with Lawrence or, or go back to Allen. He should that definitely could, play Josh Allen. That could be a difference maker there. So. It's going to be interesting to see if it, this game comes down to the wire. Yep. I agree. I think his team, again, Malik's team is a team that looks really good on paper, in my opinion, um, but he's 0-2, and that's just that's how fantasy works. It's unfortunate. <laughs> uh, Tracy is playing Ian. This oh, week. Battle of the Undefeated. Man. This might be the game of the week. This, they would have to. Yeah. And the projections are almost identical. Wow. Um, I don't know what changes are going to be made because obviously David Montgomery, his status is up in the air. It, there's like some outside chance that he could play, but I'd be nervous going with him after having that injury. So we'll have to wait and see on that. Um, and then again, Ian, we don't know about Austin Eckler, if he's going to be able to come back this week or not. So both of you guys have some injuries, but still could be a really close matchup. Yeah. It's going to be an interesting one. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Ian did, uh, grab Kelly, the chargers running back off the waiver wire. Mm -hmm. Uh, he did not produce in week two. We'll see if he leaves him in the uh, starting lineup for week three. Um, but you, you may be catching Ian at a good time, uh, to, to steal that win. Yeah. We will see. We will see. I have a couple, I have a couple of my top scores that are questionable. So mm. what are they saying about Ayuk? is what's uh, the seriousness? Of I, his I can't injury? remember what they were saying. I'll pull it up real quick. Um, he had a limited practice. Uh, that was today. He has a shoulder injury, so shoulders can be troublesome sometimes, especially as a receiver. Um, but I think that's one that we'll have to just kind of keep an eye on. It doesn't look like it might be too bad. The hard part is he plays on Thursday night, right? So uh, Thursday night games are the toughest, yeah, um, to come oh. back from. So you'll have to monitor that tomorrow, especially tomorrow will be the big day for him. Um, to determine where he's going to. I feel like, like even if, you know, when they're injured like this, if they're posting this out, even if they play, how much are they really going to be able to produce? You know, are they going to, are they going to produce at their top, you know, or, or is it just going to be, yeah, you know? it, it's always a gamble. Yeah. It's always well, a gamble. They're playing the Giants whose defense isn't stellar. Right. But so. that could also mean that that's a Christian McCaffrey game. Yeah. Uh, so it's, it's, it, again, it's all guessing. It's yeah. all a guessing game <laughs> to a certain degree. 
Uh, I benefit from that situation because I got Debo Samuel. That didn't work out week one, though, did it? <laughs> I, no, but he found his groove. <laughs> See, what happens is I threaten my players with a benching, and that and that, that, oh, that, that, that lights them. a fire. That, that All right, I see. Them. It, okay, it so, works every time. so negative reinforcement, that's your strategy? It, it okay. is. Okay. All right. Um, okay. it's, <laughs> it's tough love. Uh, the next matchup I have is my brother going up against Drake. Drake also looking for his first win at the moment. He's projected to win, um, but there's, there's some some low point totals just in general across the board, I think, this week. Uh, so I think everybody's going to probably outperform most of their projections. Um, again, my brother's got to figure out his quarterback situation. Drake also has kind of a quarterback controversy now with Justin Fields playing terribly. Uh, his bench quarterback's playing a little bit better. And... Uh, Oh, he does have Jamal Williams as well, so he'll probably have to replace Jamal Williams. I don't know what his status is either at the moment, but he was banged up a little bit in it's, the last. It game. says he's expected to miss as a five twenty four today. Okay, uh, so okay. miss yep. some time. Have to yep. find well, a replacement. Has, yeah, and I mean, I, I hate to give another player advice, but I don't think I would leave Fields in that starting lineup. Yeah, it's a little little bit nervy. Uh, maybe it is time to unleash C.J. Stroud, like he's been talking about. And then finally, the last matchup that we have for week three is the Dak Knight Rises against the Halftime Honeybees. Uh, Becky at the moment is projected to win 116 to 113, basically 114. Um, again, if Denver can somehow hold Tua and Tyreek Hill to a minimum, then you have a good chance against Becky's team. But that Matt, those those two combo is a very scary team to go up against yeah. uh, for anybody. I'm seeing a little cloud icon next to uh, Tua and Tyreek. Uh, so weather may be a factor in that game. Yeah. Um, but I'm predicting kind of a bounce back for that duo. Uh, they're one of the most most lethal quarterback wide receiver, receiver duos in, in the NFL. So yeah. uh, if I had to give an edge, I would give that to uh, Becky. So you're agreeing with Yahoo in this case. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, that's if they bounce back. Yeah. So all these matchups are so close this week. All the projections. Yeah. So I would say watch out for week. Kelsey to finally come back to full full strength. Last week mm. he played uh, more limited snaps. He this did week get his touchdown. Though. This week playing Chicago, and we saw how bad Chicago was. So. Yeah. Again, everybody hit the waiver wire. It's week three. Don't panic. That's, that's my advice always. <laughs> Malik and Drake can get a little bit of a worry, but no panic yet. Um, and good luck to everybody in week three. Tracy, thank you for coming on. Thanks for and, having uh, me. And we'll see everybody in uh, week three. All right, All good right. luck. Good luck.